Hey guys, Jennifer LeClaire here, Senior Editor of Charisma Magazine, Senior Lead of the Awakening House of Prayer here in South Florida, and author of a lot of books, including Fervent Faith. If you need to build your faith, go read Fervent Faith. But today I want to talk to you, I want to unpack more of the prophetic word the Lord shared with my heart for the month of May. I promised you I'd do it, and so I'm doing it now in Jesus' name. Let me remind you, let me read the word to you in case you didn't hear it uh, the first time. My grace is sufficient for you, says the Lord, and I've given you the measure of faith. I will move on your behalf when you step out in faith and rely on my grace to obey the words I've spoken to your heart. See, it's very important that we obey the word of the Lord. The good news is, is there is grace to obey the word of the Lord. The Lord says, I will make impossible things possible. He says, I will show you ways over, around, and through things that have held you back in past seasons. He says, I will make a way for you as you release faith-filled words and appropriate my grace that dwells on the inside of you. My grace offers you supernatural favor. My grace offers you supernatural power. My grace, says the Lord, offers you whatever you need in the moment. See, that's good news. It's good news to know the spirit of grace lives on the inside of you and whatever you need in the moment he's going to do it for you if it's according to his will and it's always his will to heal you it's always his will to strengthen you it's always his will to speak to your heart a word in due season the lord says release your faith to walk in my grace and you will see things move that seemed immovable you will see me move in ways you hoped and prayed for you will see yourself move in new dimensions of my goodness and then the lord said three words that just thrill my heart he said it's time Time to move. See, some of you have been stuck in the same place long enough. Some of you need to come out of the wilderness. Some of you need to come out of the cave. Some of you need to come out of that dry place into the place of abundance. So I want to talk to you today about just quickly six ways to tap into mega grace, six ways to appropriate the grace of God, six ways to, to receive and flow and operate in the grace. You know, the spirit of grace is on the inside of you. The Holy Spirit dwells on the inside of you. The spirit that raise Christ from the dead on the inside of you. So we don't have to pray for grace, grace, and more grace all the time because we've been given grace. Uh, grace has enveloped us. Grace dwells on the inside of us. So what do we do then? How do we tap into that grace? I'm going to give you six ways here in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Share this uh, with your friends after you watch it because it's going to bless them. The first thing is walking in humility walking in humility. Romans 12, 3 tells us not to think highly, more highly of ourselves than we ought to think. See, here's the thing. Humility cries out to God. Pride thinks it can do it itself. And so many times what happens is when we're in a situation where we need to see a move of God in our life, we try to figure it out for ourselves. We try to do things the way we've always done them. We, we forget, we neglect, and we don't seek God. But the Bible tells us to acknowledge him in all of our ways, and he will direct our paths. So we've to acknowledge God. And that shows humility. It shows humility. Pride trusts in itself. Humility trusts in the Lord. We must be humble people. Now here's the thing, James 4 and 6. You've heard this scripture, I'm sure, many, many, many times, but I want to read this to you from the Amplified Version. It says, but God gives us more and more grace. That's good news, somebody. More and more grace. That's what I need. I need more and more grace. I don't know about you, but I need more and more grace every day, all the time. I'll take all the grace I can get. If you don't want yours, I'll take yours too. Bless God. Hallelujah. I don't think that's the way it works. But the point is God gives us more and more grace. And the Bible here says power of the Holy Spirit to meet this evil uh, tendency in others fully. And this is why he says God sets himself against the proud and haughty, but gives grace continually to the lowly, to those who are humble enough to receive it. So we must position our hearts to receive the power of God, to receive a new infilling of the spirit of grace. We must be willing to ask for it. That brings me to the second point. We've got to ask for God's grace. That is a sign. That is a show of humility. Hebrews 4 and verse 16 says, let us then come with confidence 
confidence, or another version says boldly. We're to approach the throne of grace boldly. See, it's a throne of grace, praise God. It's not a throne of condemnation. It's not a throne of shame. It's not a throne of guilt. God's not going to give you a hard time for approaching his throne of grace. We're to come boldly to the throne of grace to find mercy, to obtain help, to obtain grace in a time of need. I don't know about you, but I'm a desperate woman. Maybe you're a desperate man. Maybe you're a desperate teenager. Maybe you're a desperate woman that's watching this. We have to understand that we are not uh, just desperate when we need something from God. We are desperate all the time because the Bible says that apart from Jesus, we can do nothing. But the good news is we are not apart from him. We can do all things through grace that strengthens us. We can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. And so we are, we are more than conquerors in him by his grace. But we've got to ask. We've got to ask the Lord to help us in a time of need. And the grace, whatever it is we need in that moment, will rise up from the inside of us or cloak us from whatever we need. He's going to do it according to his will. Number three, meditate on scriptures about God's grace. Spend some time studying God's grace. That will help you have the revelation that God's grace is available to you. Help you to be willing to run to his grace instead of running away from him when you mess up. See, grace is the power not to sin. And grace is not the, the license to sin. Grace is the power to sin. We don't want to get caught up in that hyper grace mess. We don't want to get, get caught up in that, that deception. We want to understand that grace enables us not to sin. Well, we've got to meditate on grace scriptures. Now, here's one I like to do. I like to turn the scripture into a confession of an, in the first person. Let me give you an example. John 1 16, we have all received from his fullness grace upon grace. I like to say I have received from God grace upon grace, abundant grace. That grace is, is it, it belongs to me. I walk in the grace of God. I talk and move in the grace of God. I live in the grace of God. I like to confess those kinds of things. Here's another one. I like this one. Acts 6 and 8. Stephen, a man full of God's grace and power, performed amazing miracles and signs among the people. I like to say I've got mega grace and I've got mega faith and I've got mega power and I walk in signs and wonders. Signs and wonders chase me down. They follow me. They flow through me. Hallelujah. And so we need to be confessing the word of God in the realm of grace to help renew our minds in that area. And number four, we need to thank, worship, and praise God for his grace. Thank, worship, and praise God for his grace. I said, thank, worship, and praise God for his grace. Sometimes if you just say, thank you, Holy Spirit, you are the spirit of grace. I thank you that you dwell on the inside of me, that you're empowering me even now just to keep my mouth shut. You're empowering me even now to lay hands on the sick and see them recover. You have empowered me. I thank you, God, for bringing peace to my soul. Just acknowledging him many times will bring that peace. It will bring that joy. It will bring that 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 that, that word, that, that, that piece of wisdom that you need. It'll just bring it in Jesus' name. And so we want to just worship. And you know, the Bible says in Psalm 22 and 3 that God inhabits, he dwells in the praises of his people. In other words, you know, when we praise him, when we worship him, we create a climate that attracts his presence, that, that causes his presence to manifest in a tangible way. That's why sometimes when you go to, to big worship concerts, you know, you begin to, to feel like, wow, the presence of God is so strong. You know, it might not feel sometimes as strong to you in your own house, in your own private closet, or maybe it does. That's awesome. But many times when you get in that corporate setting where everyone's going after God, you just feel a tangible presence because he inhabits the praises of his people. So praise God, worship God, thank God for his grace, and you'll see more of it in your life. A number five, plug into the power source plug into the power source. God is the power source. If you want more grace, if you want more of anything from God, spend more time in his presence. You'll begin to feel and sense uh, that, that you're receiving something from him. Here's the thing. If you want to have gas in your car, you're going to have to go spend some time at the gas station. Hallelujah. If you want food in your house, you're going to have to spend some time at the grocery store. Well, actually, I use Instacart and I just call and I put on my order on the internet and they bring it to me. But the point is I've got to spend some time arranging for that food, bless God. If you want grace and power in your life, you need to spend time with the living God. And he will put in you and on you what you need. He will speak to your heart, but you've got to spend time with him. And number six, here's a big one now, show grace to others. Show grace to others. Galatians 6 and 7, we know the Bible says that God is not mocked. 
For whatever a man sows, that's what he's going to reap. So if you need grace in your life, sow grace. If you need money, sow money. If you want more friends, show yourself friendly. If you need mercy, sow mercy. If you need love, sow love. I want to tell you, whatever you need, you've got to give it away. You've got to sow it so you can see a greater harvest on your life. So when I'm going through a trial, you know, when I need something, I, I, I ask for grace, I begin to sow grace. I begin to show grace to other people. I want to let them see the grace of God toward them through me that I might be able to receive more grace. But you can't give away something that you do not have. You just can't give it away. That's why you've got to learn to receive the grace of God. You've got to learn to receive the grace of God. I want to remind you that we are launching a new move of God by the grace of God. This is mega grace mega faith equals a mega movement the word of the month is mega the word the prophetic word of the month is mega and we're going to be launching a move of god on pentecost sunday i want to trickle that out to you I want to remind you I want to drop that nugget in your spirit right now stay tuned make sure you're watching me on periscope on facebook live on june the 4th we're going to upload a video and we're going to share with you this new move of god uh, it's going to set you up it's going to uh, set you on fire it's going to light you up it's going to be awesome listen if you want to sow a seed into my ministry i want to give you the opportunity to do that go to jenniferleclair.org slash donate i know many times i do these videos and they say well i want to sow into this mega i want to sow into this word i want to align myself with this word i want to align my finances with this word the lord told me to go after it uh, with an invitation a hundred partners to go after them with the word of God on mega to sow that in their heart and invite them to partner with that. So if that's you, go to jenniferleclair.org slash donate. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you. Father, I thank you for the anointing of the spirit of God. I thank you for mega grace in Jesus name. I see some of you have a, have a, 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 a favor coming upon your life in this season, a favor that's going to open doors for you. I see some of you have been rejected in the past from certain opportunities, but the Lord is bringing the uh, opportunities back around. It's not the same opportunity but it's a similar opportunity it's a better opportunity than the one you thought you lost be encouraged because grace is making a way for you favor is opening doors for you i thank you lord that you just pour out your mega grace on your people lord give them witty inventions i see creative ideas coming to many of you creative ideas i just see a, a, a thrust a realm of creativity uh, being poured out over you even to solve problems even to to, to be a peacemaker and lord says blessed are the peacemakers i just release mega of grace over you in Jesus name if you're not list on my morning prayer calls follow me at prophetic books I'm on periscope every morning uh, we are praying into the mega every morning so if this inspired you get on the periscope 6 a.m. or watch the replay Eastern time and tap into the mega we're pressing into the mega why because we want to get this word down deep inside of us and remember a new move of God launching on June the 4th Pentecost Sunday I love you guys I'll be back with you soon blessings